So let's get to the general principles behind genetics and epigenetics. Genetics means the sequence of all those nucleic acids you get. So if you change the sequence, you can change the downstream effects. But that's not all of genetics anymore. There's also a thing called epigenetics. And that is not whether the gene is abnormal, it's whether it's on or off. Think about it, particularly if you're in a specialty that uses the brain. If you have the wrong DNA from your great-grandfather or your mother or something, you may end up having a risk gene for something, depression, anxiety, PTSD, whatever, uh, schizophrenia. But it's not just abnormal genes that are going to make you have a psychiatric disorder, we think. It's normal genes. What? If a normal gene is on when it should be off, or off when it should be on, it mucks things up. The brain is orchestrated so that it's like a symphony. So if the timpani's coming in in the middle of the soft passage of the violas, it mucks things up. The timpani can do great in the right place, but just be quiet. Turn that gene off, will you? And so what happens is that we think that many of our psychiatric disorders are due to normal genes, which are off when they should be on and on when they should be off. Also, epigenetics may explain treatment effect. It could explain environmental inputs to illness. For example, trauma probably changes genes, turns some on and turns some off, and maybe irreversibly for the rest of your life. Antidepressants probably turn on and off genes. And they may do that, of course, in a good way, which actually causes improvement, and it could cause side effects as well. So beginning to think about not just your abnormal genes, but your normal genes, and how that's going to be measured in the future is probably with either little pieces of RNA, because how can you tell if a gene's on? Because remember, DNA goes to RNA, goes to proteins. So not only will people be measuring genomics and the normal and abnormal sequencing of genes, and you're thinking about that, you know, these gene tests are probably full of what? You know, five or 10 genes that you get now? You got 30,000 of them. <laughs> and although you may have a few abnormal ones, the question is whether they're on or off as well.